Simon Napier-Bell, very warm welcome to the programme. You've seen firsthand what drugs do to people, what drugs do to people in the public eye, pop singers. Why, when you've seen the misery that they cause and the destruction, why legalise them? I think, in principle, the, uh, the, the enormous intake of drugs by everybody is, is largely due to their being illegal. The fact that they're, they're pushed uh, by people who are basically criminals and uh, only in it for profit. And um, for everything you see bad about drugs, there are also plenty of good which comes from drugs. What, what, what good comes from drugs? Oh, creativity, uh, relaxation, relaxation of inhibition. Measure uh, that against the 18,000 kids who died from drugs in the States last year. A bit of relaxation, a bit of creativity. No, but I think I, uh, all I've been saying, I, I, I don't take drugs, so this is not my battle to fight, but it, I look at it... No, but you've chosen it. I, you've chosen I, to speak I look out at, on I it. I look at it and I see that, if anything, it's the, it's the drug pushes and the inability to control them which causes the excessive use of drugs. Or it's one of the causes of the excessive use of drugs. 3,000... Besides, besides which, and this is a, a really strong point, is that if drugs are legalised, the drugs which people take now wouldn't be the drugs people take. I mean, when prohibition was in force, people drank... Why? You don't, you don't know that. I mean, the government's I mean, assumption is that in the case of strongly addictive drugs, you legalise those and consumption would rise enormously. I don't think it would rise. The people who already take them will probably go on being hooked on them. But the fact is, if drugs are legalised, drug companies will make drugs which, which are recreational drugs, which they don't do now. When prohibition was ended, people didn't rush around trying to buy wood alcohol. They drank better, better spirits and better... Oh, and they're killing themselves on better spirits spirits now, that, aren't they? That I wouldn't, ha hand over fist. That I wouldn't disagree with, but then you have to... Are, are we going to I mean, ban so alcohol too? No, but so far, the number of people who die is a fraction uh, from drugs, is a, is a fraction of those who die from tobacco and alcohol. You want to bring it up to those levels? No, I don't want to bring it up at all. And anyway, all I'm saying is that uh, the illegality is it's an impossible situation at the moment. It can't, it's not going to be controlled, it's not changed. Everything, all the experience of the last 20, 30, 40 years of drugs shows that, that making it illegal doesn't control it. Therefore, something else has to be looked at. Huge cost to the health service if you legalise drugs. Oh, both I mean, ways around. I think that the, the, the moral dilemma the government has, if you, if you legalise drugs, then the government will be making money out of drugs, which, which is something they'll never, never get past. If you decriminalise them, all you do is you, you help the drug pusher. It you say decriminalise. What about the strong correlation between crime and drug use? Well, that's what I'm saying. If you de mm -hmm. decriminalise drug use, if you say, all right, well, to have soft drugs and possess them and take them is not a criminal offence, as Belgium has just done. No, I'm talking about those who, who use drugs and then commit crimes, rather than actually committing I think a the crime majority by of, using the amount it. of drug use is a crime commit crimes, they commit crimes to buy drugs at the enormously inflated price that, that make it that them being illegal causes to happen. But, but when, you, when you have a correlation between those who are taking hard drugs and being shown as a result of 90 that... 90 percent of the crimes... ...to be committing a huge number of crimes yes, as a result of Yes, but they're committing that. the crimes to get the money to buy the drugs. And Thirty then commit crimes when they're under the influence of those drugs. Uh, principally, they're committing crimes to get the drugs. I mean, 35 years ago, well, her her heroin could be obtained from national health. The figures don't really support your view. I mean, figures for England and Wales, out of people arrested who gave samples, this was in, in 1999, the group with the costliest drug habits was responsible for more than 50 percent of all offences in, in the group that was monitored. No, it's possible, and it's possible also if you check the alcohol figures, it's exactly the same, but there's no one going around suggesting that alcohol should be criminalised. And I suspect eventually we have to come to terms with the fact well, there that... there are a few, those who deal with the sort of health aspects of... Well, not saying it should be... 120,000 people not in this country a year who die not, from... Not saying it should be criminalised. They say just better education, and that's really what's needed is drug education. The point is to keep kids off it. Uh, absolutely, it's okay. And what we're talking about is, anyway, if it's legalised, it's not legalising it for kids. You're going to have the same age barrier for drugs as alcohol. Uh, this letter from a parent in the States who, who lost a 15-year-old through co cocaine, it says... Exacerbating this problem are those who use and promote drug use as a personal right, regardless of how they couch their rhetoric. These so-called drug policy experts want to be allowed to use whatever drugs they want, disregarding the cost that drug use imposes on society. It is a huge cost, isn't it? Well, I think the cost of, of, of chasing after the criminal element is, is also equally, equally great. And in America, uh, something I thought would never happen, they are actually beginning to discuss the possibility of legalising or what would happen if we legalised. Here we have discussed it previously. And, and Legalising all drugs. Not that, making it a criminal offence to take drugs. That's been discussed for a long time, yes, hasn't it? Yes. But so far, society is coming out against it. Oh, I think it will continue to come against it. But I, it's still, my opinion is that uh, it, it has to be legalised. I don't see any way of really controlling it and, and edu educating people why it's illegal. Isn't the danger of 
you coming out and promoting this view with your standpoint, um, your experience in the music industry, in, uh, that you help glamorise this? I don't glamorise. I don't take drugs. any drugs. I took one no, out no, no, in 1966. I think drugs. I, I don't approve of drugs or like them in, in a social but way. By but you I, saying it should be legalised, and by people in the music industry saying they take drugs on a regular basis, makes it seem cool to kids, doesn't well, it? It may do, but if it's if it's decriminalised, at least whatever kids take those things aren't, aren't being wound. If, if you want to say to a kid, you're like a giant advert on a billboard, aren't you? You know, it's like a. But you don't carry a health warning, unlike those cigarette ads. For well, I, I don't agree with that. I, I think that. By decriminalising it and teaching, teaching people to respect what a drug can do and, and be fearful of what a drug can do, it's very much better than simply saying, you're a criminal, we, we can't talk about it, we're not going to tell you about it. It's, it's, it's not the right way to go about it. Why did you not take drugs? When you saw, because you saw what was happening to people around you? No, I just didn't fancy them. I mean, I, I discovered that alcohol was a, was, was a pleasant way to relax at the end of the day when I was in my 20s, and I think that's been enough for me ever since. You said your, your best times or the funniest times have been when you're drunk. Many, 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 yes. Best times of your life when you're drunk? I think uh, in conjunction with other things, frequently a uh, drink is the best part of a good day at the end of the day. It brings out great conversation. It Isn't that be. a bit sad? Possibly. But it has to, I might pleasure, be pleasure has to come out of a bottle. I might be a very sad person, but uh, are you going to tell me you haven't sat and had wonderful convivial conversations over a bottle of wine?